Okay, so now that we've got the satellite images in there, uh, we can just leave those for now and come back to the, um, the floor plan to work on the stairs. And uh, they're the last thing we really need to do before going to the section to uh, finish off the, the uh, structural elements, which will then allow us to do the uh, reflected ceiling plan. So looking at the drawing here, you can see I've given you a dimension for the start of the stairs, 4325. So I'll just offset that amount, 4325 from the inside of the wall there, above. Right, so that line there should be the starting point of the stair. And then the overall length of the stair is 6140. So again, offset 6140. And now, you should be able to work out the size of the stair based on the riser count. But unfortunately with this stair, you have a landing that uh, is going to uh, cause some problems there. So I'm just going to put this over to one side and keep it there. So, so I'll just have to tell you that the riser uh, or the going dimension or the tread size is uh, 250. And that's fairly typical anyway. Uh, we've got the width of the stair there, which again is, uh, you can see, 1075. So I'll offset that, 1075 to the left. The posts as well, uh, I think you can just assume uh, a size there and say that they are, uh, it looks to me like about 80 mil. We might need to change that and the, the railing we might just do 50 or something like that but we'll have a look at that afterwards so the first thing is to get the um we'll say I'll, I'll offset the uh the railing or am i going to cheat again and measure off the pdf no i'll just uh don't want to open the file where i've got all these measurements so i'll just offset for now uh 50 mil And then might tidy it up a bit using fillet. And then gonna make a layer for the stairs. Again, colour is entirely up to you, but yellow is the standard colour for timber. The stairs are made from timber, so I'm just going to make it a yellow colour. And this will be in projection, so 0.25. And then making it the current layer. So we're going to put all those lines for now onto that new stair layer. And then I'm going to go and start offsetting again 250 for the tread size to make the first line for the stairs and then right away I'll trim that back to that edge there and then again keep using offset And so we have uh, one, two, three, four lines there. And then we've got a gap for the landing, which we can work out by coming back the other way. So here, it's going to offset from the top. Again, stop temporarily to trim with that edge there, enter, and then the line to trim. And then again with offset at 250 again. You can just keep bringing that down. Using copy here would be a lot quicker, but it uh, doesn't take long to offset each of these. And so they're probably worth counting. So one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 treads is what I have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, one more. There we go. So that's the complete staircase, but of course a lot of it's shown above the uh, brake line. And so uh, if you don't have a symbol or a block for your brake lines, it's a fairly easy thing just to draw on the fly. So I'll just show you that way again. So it doesn't hurt to make a layer for things like uh, brake lines. The colour probably could just be white for something like this. And then the line weight 0.35 is good. And so the trick to drawing a brake line is to draw the, the line first. And uh, get the angle. So you can see here it's crossing over three steps. And uh, I personally don't like the way it's done here. That's the way Revit does it. But I think it looks better if it's sticking out either side of the object you're breaking. And then, but that's just a graphical decision. Uh, and then to draw the brake symbol itself, can always start with a line snapping to the midpoint of that line, take it out by eye to an angle that you want the, all of these brake lines to be. So that's probably about what I want. And then this is really the key to it. You can select that line now and just looking at that actually I might bring it down a bit. That's a better angle. And then I'm going to use mirror, snap to the end of that line, and then take it back perpendicular to the main line that I've drawn. Enter to finish. Now I can select those two lines, use mirror again, and choose the ends of each of those lines to flip it to the other side. And now I can simply move those two lines over to the right. So that's an easy way of drawing a brake line. And now with trim, I can choose these two lines as my edges, enter, and then in between. And uh, you don't need to be that neat, you could always just draw some zig zigzag lines. But uh, anyhow, that method definitely works. And I didn't make my brake layer current, so I've got to change those lines onto it now. That's better. Okay, so now we want these uh, these lines above to be on a different stair layer. So I'm going to make a new layer for stairs that's hidden. So A stairs hidden is what I'll call it. So by hidden I mean above, not below. And so I'm going to change the line type there to hidden and I make the line make lighter as well it's usually good practice to make uh, line types for the hidden layers um, lighter than others for the beams we, we had them a little bit heavier just so they stand out a bit more because they're single lines but for things like this you definitely should make them light Okay, so all of these lines down to the one I've left, they can just be changed to that new layer. And notice the dashes are maybe a little bit um, on the large side. So I'm going to go back into layers, and even though it should really, strictly speaking, be hidden, we can go and make it a smaller hidden just because the object is quite small and we need some more dashes in there. So I'm going to load in 
uh, hidden to, which is a smaller version of hidden, basically. Okay, so notice how we get more dashes into the line that way. Uh, and so then these long lines for the handrail and then also these lines for the stair uh, treads here need to be broken. And there's always been an issue with the break command in AutoCAD. This is one where Revit definitely is, uh, does, it, does a better job, I think. It works, it's just a bit fiddly the way it works in AutoCAD. Uh, oh, no, they finally fixed it. Okay, I didn't even notice that. So they've got the option to break at a single point as a separate command. Good. Okay, so I don't need to worry about showing you the tricky way. Okay, so here, just use that option. Break at a single point. And then we can just choose the line that we want to break, and then choose the point for it to break. So you just need to keep repeating that command. That makes life really easy. In the old days, you had to use a special option. So even though I'm breaking this line several times, I'm still using break at single point. So there we are. And uh, actually that was a bit silly of me. Uh, strictly speaking, that's right. I've broken this line in between the break line, but it's n graphically not going to read very well, so it would make more sense to have this line that's broken extending all the way. And uh, you'll see when it crosses the break line, it will make sense. Do that. Okay, because the dash ends up uh, near the brake line anyway. This one, well, you might think it's not worth breaking it, but it still is because you want the line weights to be different. And so I had broken it, so, and I better change that to the layer as well. And I'll just see if I can make it a little bit lighter still. And if we can read the difference. Not really. But when it prints, we should be able to definitely see a difference between this line weight and and this one. It's just so on the screen it doesn't come up. So there we are. And then remember, always have an arrow to indicate up in AutoCAD. And there are arrow blocks that you can use. But uh, at first you can just, just draw lines for that, so... Uh, so I haven't made any layers for my annotation yet, I don't think, but I'll... Uh, i better make some for my text before too long, and I'll make one for the... Uh, uh, for the arrows, and other lines, so this will be just symbol. And again, usually white and 0.25. And oh, yeah, break, sorry, should have been a um, NO layer as well. And it's up to you, actually. Some people would make that 0.25 as well. Just depends how you want it to read. Uh, so then uh, with the arrow layer, I can just draw a line coming up from the midpoint of the stair there to where I want the arrow to go. It could be onto the final stair before the um, 
brake line or onto the one at the end of the landing, it's up to you. I'll just take it to there. Oh, I've got to fix my line type. So that should be continuous. Okay, so again, you can just draw the arrows by eye at first. Just draw a line at the angle you want and then mirror. So that's fine to begin with. And then you can think about projecting that to make your, uh, to draw your stair in section. So it's not going to be cut with the location I have for the section line, which is going to make things easier and also will look better. So we can just see the whole staircase viewed from the side or in elevation. And uh, yeah, so I'll come back and do the posts afterwards. We should definitely show those posts, but I'll leave them off for now and just set out the main uh, steps and the, uh, well, at least the stringer on the side. So just to give you the basic method there, I'm going to draw a line from the edge of my stair up to the uh, floor above in the section. So I'm not stopping at the structure, I'm taking it to the, uh, to the floor level. And then I'm going to change that back to my stairs layer. Okay, so now I'm going to trim that to the floor line. Draw another one from the inside edge there that I should have done before, but I'll do this separately. Ah, sorry, not from there, from the outside, sorry now. So same idea, up to floor above. The same way. Uh, well, the stair on the next level is different. Yeah. And also, we want this as a measuring stick. So, basically, the length of that line is the total height of the stair. So now we need to know the total number of rises and. Even though it's not labelled on the drawing I've given you, it's, it's always good practice um, with the sort of drawings you're doing, so you're doing construction drawings, and um, so on those drawings it's always good practice to number all of your stairs. And this is a good way of reminding yourself of the count and uh, checking it properly. And it's surprisingly easy to do in a sort of manual way, uh, which is what I'm going to do. There are automatic tools that will do this for you, but uh, the manual way is uh, is still pretty quick. And uh, so I'm going to make a um, a new text style, and so it could actually be notes, but we'll call it um, yeah, maybe notes. Note one or something, or note will put uh, the size. So note two millimeter. And I'm trying to think the so, so 250 at uh, at one to 100 is going to be uh, 2.5. So that gives us room. So yeah, two millimeters is, is what it has to be. So I'm going to make the font Roman S, which is Roman simplex. So it's a single line font, which is what you want. And then the paper text type 2 mil, obviously, for 2 mil text. Make it current. Change to my, ah, uh, oh, so that's why I haven't made any layers for text, so I'm going to make a layer for text. and draw in some single line text. And the side's going to be cleaner, I think the right. So one. You can see even two mil. Yeah, it's a little bit on the large side. So I'm going to just go into properties 
and adjust that height there, make it 1.8, which is about the smallest you should ever make text, to still have it legible. And then I can just copy that, so using copy command, so I've selected the text, click the copy button, and now I'm going to pick up the base point on each thread. Then we can just double click on each one, change them. And then just keep copying. Alright, now, so I'm going to change an option before I do this. So in properties, justify, I'm going to change to right which will move everything across and that's exactly what I want I'm going to move it back now you'll see when I get to the larger numbers there's a good reason for that graphically the one doesn't read very well there so you can always move that individually something you've got to think about and then uh, again copying the other side, the landing of course counts as a as a riser. So notice how when I do 10, it goes to the right. That's why I justified it that way. So I know it might seem pretty tedious numbering each step but it's much easier than counting them many times because you've forgotten the count or getting it wrong because you haven't noted it in drawings. Uh, here. Editing each one. Twenty one. So notice I've done the uh, the riser or the tread that is beyond the last step, and that's because the floor on the level above counts as your last tread. So we've got twenty two risers. Okay, so now. We need to divide this line based on that count. So we should have, so looking at this, uh, we should have the same number inside. So it's going to be 21, which will give us 22 rises, 22 segments in between. Also 22 ends. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so under the draw menu, you can choose uh, point, where's it gone to, and then divide. Also, just you click on the divide button there, select the line, and then 21 should be the right count. Sometimes I have to think about this, but uh, let's just check. So if you don't see the points, you need to go to utilities and then point style and then change it to a different style that you can see. Okay, so let's just get this right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, not, yeah, I had a feeling I was wrong. So it is, yeah, 22 should have been the count. Because you count, yeah, so it's double thinking so. Okay, so let's do that again. 22 should have been what I typed in. And now I can draw a line across 
in on the stairs layer. From one of those nodes across to the wall. And then copy it multiple times. Yeah, that's one of those things. I mean, as you do it, you, it's good to just take your time and work it out. No, 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 divide. It's used for all sorts of things. And it's just crossing the point at which divide that line. Yep, yep. And stair set out does take a bit of practice, but once you've done it once, then it'll work the same way every time. And, uh, yeah, no, auto, I mean, because Revit does it for you, um, you often don't think too much about this uh, until you have to do it in AutoCAD, but uh, of course before Revit we always had to do it in AutoCAD, or even before that just doing it by hand. And uh, so it's a really important thing to know. And uh, so again, counting those we should have uh, the right number of risers up to the next floor, which counts as our final riser. And then I'll just do a final measure on the height of a step there and notice it's over what is legal so it's 200 and whatever, 207 but that's an existing older stair and a lot of older stairs don't comply with the current controls so that's quite normal but anyhow that's the method so just to make it clear Essentially what you're doing is working out the floor to floor height first and that's what this line here gave me and then you divide that by your riser count to get the um, the height of each riser not the other way. Often people think you start with the, the riser height and then just go and draw your stair and you never do it that way because it will usually be not a round number. So you can see here the number it's giving me is 207.2727 that's quite normal so always floor to floor height first and that's why we set out those levels initially and then divide it to get your eyes